Our world is growing more and more disposable. You buy an item and once it breaks, whether through planned obsolescence or malfunction, you throw it away or recycle it and pick up a brand new device. But when something breaks shortly after purchase, sometimes it just takes a small and simple labor to make it reliable again. This is one of those stories. Hey everyone, today I'm documenting an interesting project I did recently. I came to acquire an office printer which someone had broken within a few weeks of purchase. They tripped over the USB cord and the port broke. Although they could use the printer over Wi-Fi, it doesn't scan if it's not connected to a computer, and sometimes Wi-Fi printing can be unreliable. So they replaced the printer, and they were looking to see if someone wanted it before they recycled it. Because an official repair would cost a lot more than replacing the printer. Especially for something as simple as a port replacement, I'm happy to try to repair it myself. The first thing I needed to do was make sure I could reach the port. So I took off the side panel, which is held in place just by one screw and two clasps, and had a look. The main board is super accessible, so I started labeling the cables and removing them. After that, I removed the main board itself. This just took a few screws and the removal of a secondary chip. Nothing was abnormal about the port or the motherboard, so I knew that I could do the replacement. The USB ports that printers use are pretty universal and don't require anything proprietary, so it was easy to find a bundle of 10 replacement ports on Amazon for about $13. Once they arrived, I sat down for about 20 minutes and replaced the port. I started out by desoldering the old port. Desoldering is the hardest part of a basic soldering job for me. It's the most technique heavy part and there are a lot of different tools that can help different desoldering situations. I don't have a lot of options in my arsenal right now. A port like this benefits from a heat gun and heat resistant tape, but I don't have that. So after I desolderized the stabilizer pins, when it came to the four data pins on the bottom, I ended up adding more solder first to connect the four pins together so that when I would heat one pin up, the heat spread to all four of them and I could wiggle them out all at once. After the report was removed, I heated up each hole and used a basic solder sucker to clean them out so I could insert the new port into the holes. Then it was just a quick task of putting the new port in place and soldering in the pins. I started with the stabilizers and then I did the data pins to make sure everything was snugly in place. After that, it was just a quick reassembly and a test and everything worked brilliantly. A $13 repair netted me a printer that retails at $300. There are increasing numbers of cases where this isn't possible anymore but it's something that really brings me joy when those situations arise where I can breathe new life into a machine that only has a small, fixable defect. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was interesting, and if it inspires you to look at these situations and tackle them yourself, that's even better. If you're also a tinkerer, comment below if you have any stories about similar repairs that you've done. In the meantime, if you liked the video, hit like and subscribe for more tech tips and repairs.